All right, humans. So back with another podcast here. We've got a different format for you guys today, uh, we're Mr. Pig. Um, so we're, our format is going to be uh, we're going to we're going to take sides. So we're, we're going to do a topic, and one of us is going to debate one side, and then one of us is kind of going to debate the other side. You'll see when we start. Uh, the topic of the day is going to be um, what was I saying? Where is it? Uh, how to start playing poker after a long break. So let's say like you're somebody that, that took a long break and a long break could be, it's like, it's subjective, right? Like a long break for me is like four days, you know what I mean? Um, but a long break for somebody else might be two months or, or two weeks or two days, you know, I don't know. Like for me, if I take four days off of poker, that's kind of a long break. Uh, mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about how to come back into the swing of things after taking a long break, whatever that means to you. And Scott's going to be the guy that kind of has been on the long break. Uh, so that's, mm-hmm. that's how we're going to structure this, right? So Scott, um, how long has been, how long has your break been? We're hypothetically talking, by the way, guys. This is not like Scott hasn't actually taken a long break, but he's just being that guy that just took a long break, and now he's like, eh, I want to come back. I don't want to come back. How do I start? You know, let's let's get into it, Scotty. How long's your break been? How how long did you take a break? Six months. Six months. <laughs> okay, that's quite the break. Um, mm-hmm. So so how do we come back from a six month break? That's the question, right? You know, for me, the way I would approach that, um, and there are some people actually in this situation, by the way. Uh, some some people years, right? Like they'll they'll spend like a year or two away from the tables and they'll come back or whatever. Um, like this guy. Yeah, everybody's yeah. favorite. Everybody's favorite poker player. Yeah, and and yeah, uh, and we we personally know some people that have done that. But um, for me, the first things first, right? It depends really what you've been doing during your break. If you, if you've been like kind of just like on the beach, spending time with family, friends, just relaxing, hanging out. Um, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to get back into like a full grind because it's such a different, it's such a drastic change, right? Like, so Scott, you've been taking a break for six months. I mean, that's quite some time. So um, yeah. what I would say first is when you come back, you don't want to overwhelm yourself and like, get any negative associations with like playing poker, right? So you take a six month break, mm-hmm. you've been just lounging around on the beach, sipping pina coladas and all this. So what I would recommend is first of all, play like at least two or three levels lower than you used to play. Cause the games are tougher, obviously. Um, and but then it doesn't excite me, Mr. Jack. Uh, what, see, which I part, don't, like not I don't making get the same. enough money or what, what is it? I don't get the same thrill out of playing low. You see, like if I if mm. I drop down and I play like the twenties or the fifties, like yeah. the the amount of money doesn't excite me. Like the wins don't excite me. The losses don't make me anxious. The multipliers I don't find particularly exciting. Mm-hmm. I'm not competing with the best players, and these are all the reasons why I got in the game in the first place. I, I wanted to play against the best and. And, and try and be one of the best. Yeah, so I, 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 it's just not motivating to me to play those stakes. I agree. I agree 100%. And, and, and the point is not to play those stakes long run, right? It's 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 really just to kind of just get your feet wet back into it. Um, so, like, let's say, like, you play a little bit, right? Like, just when I say a little bit, I'm talking about, like, 30 minutes or, or an hour per day for, like, the first week. Just to kind of dip your toes in. Yeah, you're going to be bored. Um, I, I think you should come in with the mindset that ah, I'm going to be a little bit bored. It's, it's not going to feel as good coming back, like, after – having like, you know, all this life EV, let's say, I don't know, you've been spending time with your family and all this. Um, but that's not the point at first, right? You're going to move up in stakes mm-hmm. fast, right? Like, so that, that's what I want you to keep, you know, at the forefront of your mind. You're going to move up in stakes fast. You're going to start playing a little bit more each day, just enough that you're a little bit uncomfortable, um, but not enough that you're completely overwhelmed, I would say. So the, the last thing I would, you know, advise you to do is come back and, set your schedule six hours per day, eight hours per day, 10 hours per day, because, you know, after a few days, you're just gonna be like, eh, I, I'm, ba- I'm back to my beach life. Like, I don't wanna deal with this or whatever. But then like, like you said, you know, you wanna feel that excitement and that, uh, you know, that adrenaline and, you know, playing the best players. So um, I will use that fuel to study more. 
when you come back, right? So do like 30 minutes to an hour of studying per day and then 30 minutes to an hour of playing per day. Uh, see how you feel, you know, see how you feel. Maybe you want to start a little bit less. Maybe you want to start a little bit more, but don't force yourself into more, you know, straight out to get. But what happens if, so you say play like an hour a day, right? 30 minutes, say, an hour, yeah. 30 minutes an hour and you say mm -hmm. you know the intent is that i'm going to move up quickly back to the stakes that i'm going to be playing but we all know the variance can be pretty brutal mm -hmm. particularly at the moment people are playing a lot of regs so what happens if i have a really bad run from the get-go and it's like a couple k games of poor results if i'm playing 30 minutes to an hour a day it's going to take me like months just to get back to where i was how do i know when i'm ready to move back up yeah i mean that's that's a great question but you know, I'm not telling you to necessarily restrict yourself to 30 minutes an hour. Maybe you're feeling it one day. You want to play three, four hours. Maybe you're going through some bad variants and like that gives you maybe motivation to, to play more. Because sometimes when you're going through bad variants, it's either or. You know, for me, I almost feel like playing more when I'm going through some bad variants. Because I'm like, I want to get through this variance kind of thing, you know. Uh, for some other people, it's, you know, um, I want to play less. Um, mm -hmm. But you just want to listen to your to your body more when you're after you've taken such a long break. You want to just like kind of zone in what was happening. Maybe your body's telling you slow it down, or maybe your body's telling you, you know what, I'm ready to play three, four, or five more, uh, you know, f five hours. Um, but you know, it, it it all really depends on the person. I would say like like for you, Scott, it might be different. For you know, Jose, it might be different. For Alejandro, it might be different. I'm making up names, but Alejandro is somebody actually on our team. Um, you know, for for everybody, it's gonna be a little bit different. You know, every time I'll give you my personal experience. Whenever I've taken like you know a, a long break, mm -hmm. which for me like actually one time it was like three weeks, which was you know I think the long two times it was like a few weeks, which is the longest I've ever taken in my life. And when I came back, I didn't feel like playing. Like, it was weird. Because, like, you just get in, like, vacation mode, let's call it, right? Like, you get in vacation mode where you're just, like, lounging around, you're chilling. And you get back and you're like, what am I doing in front of this computer for eight hours? This is crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but then what's funny is, like, after about, like, four or five days, just back to it. it it's really about just kind of, like, going through the shit of the first three, four, or five days. For some people, it might be the three, four, or five weeks even. Um, it's about kind of like forcing yourself into going through that shit for a little while. And then you just get back into the groove of things. That, that initial push is the hardest, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so, so you're going to feel some resistance on that initial push after taking such a prolonged, you know, period of time off. You're definitely going to feel like you don't want to come back or you kind of can't start playing. You know what I mean? Um, but you kind of, you, you basically have to force yourself. It's like, it's like, you know, when you're, when you're working a nine to five job, Scott, you've worked nine to five jobs. How many mornings do you not feel like going to work, but then you go anyways? You know what I mean? Pretty much most of them. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what it comes down to when, when you, after you take a long break and, and, and you want to get back into poker, you got to understand, you're not going to feel like doing it. I'll tell you, if you're six months on a beach vacationing around Europe and, you know, traveling the world, and then you come back to poker, you're not going to feel like doing it. Uh, you're just going to have to do it, though. And then eventually you kind of, you know, are going to get back into the into the, into the the groove of things. But uh, the main point being, you, you don't have to feel like getting back to actually get back. You just have to get back. You know, you just but have to I, do it. I'm concerned at this point because... Six months in poker is a long time, right? And six months in poker is probably like three years in the real world or something along those lines. So the, the game moves yeah. fast. The meta changes. People have been studying. People have been coaching. Absolutely. Everyone's getting um, a lot better. Everyone's getting a lot better. The games are tougher. So you know, you really, you got to ask yourself this because this could be an option for you too, Mr. Scott. You know, This could be an option for you too. Maybe you don't want to come back into poker. Maybe you want to work a nine to five job. How does that sound? Maybe like the thing is like, here's the thing, right? You have to compare it to other forms of making money, right? If you compare mm -hmm. it to just like being in vacation mode, it's going to be, you know, vacation mode sounds pretty cool uh, until you run out of money or until, you know, um, your lifestyle has to get lower and lower because you're not making any mm -hmm. money. 
Uh, so you got to compare poker to like other things that can make you money, right? So if, if you're comparing it to like a nine to five job where you have a boss that's like yelling at you and telling you to put the paperwork on his table, you know, at this time and this and that, waking up at eight, you know, seven, eight o'clock in the morning every day, no matter what, um, you know, you, you really got to com compare those two and be like, you know, well, poker does sound pretty good compared to that, you know, uh, ask mm -hmm. you, so the point is you can't pair, compare poker to vacation mode because in vacation mode, you don't make any money. Uh, you got to compare it to other forms of you making mm -hmm. money. If you have another form of making money, another job, another certain something that you want to do to make money, and that certain mm -hmm. something makes you happier, then do that, right? Uh, that's the thing is like you don't have to force yourself to be a poker reg if you don't want to be. Um, and that goes for everyone. to be. Yeah, if you if you want to be that that's 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 another that's another thing, right? But how do I how do I? The problem is is that I'm in a state of sort of cognitive dissonance almost mm. here because I want to be a poker player, but I don't want to have to take the steps in order to be back where I was. So I don't know how I'm yeah. going to catch up with my opponents. I don't know if I can. I don't want to put in the. I, I don't necessarily want to put in the extra hours. Is it even possible for me? given six months absence when everyone's been studying, can I even catch up with the field at this point? If if you don't want to put in the work, uh, the answer is no, you cannot. Um, you know, I have to be brutally honest with you. Uh, if, if you're taking six months off, you're going to have to come back guns blazing, right? Because you're already like, that six months is a period of when the regs in the games are getting better and you haven't been. Um, mm -hmm. You either have to, the thing with poker is, you know, this is my personal opinion. You've got to be in or you got to be out. You know, there's no half-assing poker. If you're, if you're half-assing poker in terms of like half-assing your study and kind of like, eh, just like not really treating it like it's a profession, um, you're just not going to make that much money. You know, you, you have to you have to commit to it um, in terms of, you know, committing your studying time. Like if, if you're... If you're just kind of like going through the motions and like not studying for months on end and just like playing the same old games and like making just enough to get by, um, I would tell you, you know, you got to change your attitude towards poker or start to look for something else to do.